had a lot of fun talking with and meeting educators and support professionals from across the state. And you've all seen me on the segue I, I just came onto the stage with. And some of you may be wondering, well, what's that all about? Um, well, I get around on a Segway because my legs don't work so well anymore. Uh, and the reason for that is because in 1981, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, MS, and have served as a state representative with MS, I've served as a state senator with MS, served as Secretary of State with MS, and I will serve as your next governor with MS. It is time to stop making excuses and to start fully funding education in this state. Public education in this state has been starved of resources that it needs to thrive for the past 20 years. Teachers and school systems have been asked to produce more and more with less and less year after year. And let me be clear, when I talk about public education, I talk about pre-kindergarten, I talk about K-12, I talk about community colleges, and I talk about higher education. Frankly, we are dropping the ball on funding at every level in Oregon. And today, I'm standing for you, and I will make you this promise. I promise to stand up every day and fight for my plan to fully fund education. I promise to stand up for living wages and strong collective bargaining rights for all teachers. And I promise to stand against any innovation that means merit pay, more bureaucracy, loss of bargaining rights, proportional funding, and any other nonsense that attacks educators. Today, I stand with you. How do you feel about merit pay? <laughs> I think I made it very clear in my speech that I think merit pay is really ridiculous. Now, I want to tell you a personal story about why I think that. Because I don't just think that because it's a bad idea. It is. But I want to tell you a personal story. It's a story about my sister-in-law who teaches here in Springfield. And she teaches, she's, a, she's a, you know, she's probably within five years of retirement. She's been a teacher a long time. She's really good at what she does. And she chooses to teach students who have English as a second language and who have IEPs, who are handicapped and have special efforts. She chooses to teach those students. And I have to say that I think it would be grossly unfair to see her pay lower because those students, those challenging students, aren't meeting certain benchmarks uh, of merit. So. Um, you explained how you would fully fund the QEM model. Would you once again endorse making class size a mandatory subject of bargaining? And if so, how would you propose to pay for that? So I supported the bill when I served in the state senate. I was Senate Majority Leader, and I supported the bill that did in fact pass the Senate that said uh, class size needed to be a part of man a, a mandatory part of bargaining, not just a permissive part. Uh, I think it's a fundamental issue of good education for our kids that relates to class size. Also, a good experience for educators actually being able to do what they're trained to do instead of just being classroom cops. So I really, I, I would continue to support uh, really moving toward move, lowering class size. And I think the fundamental issue in lowering class size is finding a way to adequately fund education. And the QEM really does address class size and keep us at a reasonable class size.